Retired Air Force Lieutenant General David DePula joins us, Dean of the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies. So, General, do you think the president did the right thing in not pulling the trigger on an attack? Well, the short answer, uh, Eric, is yes. I think uh, what's important to recognize is that you know, the near-term actions need to put in the context of what is our desired long-term strategic uh, outcome. Uh, in other words, while the president and his staff need to take action one step at a the time, they need to consider 10 steps ahead. And uh, I think if you listen to what's coming out of the administration and the president's advisors, that's exactly what you hear. The actions that have been taken, uh, the, the prudent restraint that the president took in not jumping to military action in response to the Iranian aggression, uh, gives the Iranians uh, an off-ramp uh, to discuss the future uh, with the president, while at the same time being under uh, no illusion that any further aggression wouldn't uh, re be re met with strong U.S. response. You use the term prudent restraint. As you just said, is it a sense not, as some critics say, uh, his reticence is weakness, but instead it was wise? Because uh, they know that, that if something else happens, they could still get hit, but this is a chance, as you said, to have an off-ramp for some talks, negotiations, and that it is in the president's power to take action or not. No, absolutely, and, and I think it is a, a, a viable way forward. It's also important to understand Eric, that there are a lot of commentaries that tend to equate any use of military force as a commitment uh, to long-term, uh, uh, long-scale uh, engagement uh, along the lines of what we saw in Iraq and Afghanistan, and nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, military force is uh, one element uh, in the president's national security uh, set of alternatives. Uh, to meet his long-term objectives. So we got to get over this notion that the use of force uh, results in a binary action that plunges us into long-term conflict, because that's not true. And it certainly could send or would send a message to uh, Tehran. Here is how the president sees it in uh, what he said yesterday before he left for Camp David. I think the response should be, well, first of all, as you know, we've done very massive sanctions. We're increasing the sanctions now. Uh, but the response is always going to be very strong. I built up a lot of capital. I've had a lot of people that aren't Trump fans saying, I can't believe. You know, a lot of them said, we're going to be in World War III the first week. Didn't work out that way. He says the response will be strong. Uh, tomorrow he's going to announce tougher sanctions. He's already uh, sanctioned the uh, IRGC, the Revolutionary Guard, oil right. industry, banks, financial institutions, officials. What next in terms of his maximum pressure campaign do you see? Um, well, I think uh, targeting uh, steel and aluminum, um, there are other materials that can still are still viable to coming under uh, sanctions that put pr uh, pressure on the regime. Um, what has been announced recently as well in the context of uh, offensive cyber operations, we can't forget that that is now becoming uh, a more nominal element uh, in the bag of tools that the president has yeah, for accomplishing they're doing that now. his objectives. According to the reports, they're, they're, they've cyber attacked the Iranian missile program uh, to Correct. try to stop them from launching any more ballistic missiles. Right. So these are all elements uh, that provide pressure to achieve the national security objectives without necessarily using uh, kinetic force. And in terms of protecting the ships and preventing any more attacks, there have already been six attacks on Iranian oil tankers. Uh, do you think that the administration's next step should try and form an international force, much like, like we saw during the tanker wars in the 1980s, 87, well, protecting the tankers and, and, and the ships in the Strait of Hormuz? Well, yeah, Eric, I think you're spot on. I mean, in one of the options, courses of action that I'm sure is being considered is to declare a, a no-sales zone, if you will, around uh, commercial shipping. Um, you know, you know so the, the specifics are not as important, but a certain distance, uh, which if a <clears throat> ship approaches within that distance, they're subject to destruction. Um, that is another way to uh, establish uh, limits, if you will, and, and have a clear understanding of the consequences that might occur if uh, the Iranians uh, proceed to violate them. And finally, General, uh, what do you predict? How do you see this going? Let's say the Iranians uh, take out uh, one of our war planes or uh, allies' assets, such as other oil tankers, or there's more of a serious type of attack. 
What do you think well, is going to happen? Well, you know, it's difficult to ascertain what's going to happen. What's important is that the president and his team have put in place the conditions to defend uh, U.S. and allied uh, forces. Uh, the next steps, I mean, we, we clearly have time on our side now. Another point I wanted to make to your audience that is not discussed is the Iranians being on notice that they're subject to attack for any more aggressive action have to maintain a high state of alert. That's costly. It's also um, very wary on the people that have to maintain that support. So that puts pressure on them as well. And the president needs to take this time uh, to gather up the coalition of allies and to isolate Iran uh, and undo what Iran was trying to do to us, and that's isolate the United States. And I think that's moving forward uh, in, in, a, in a very appropriate manner. That's a very good point, that the pressure is on Iran. The folks who call us the great Satan and still chant death to America, uh, the pressure's on. General, thank you. Good to see you. You bet. Of course. Bye-bye.